It makes you think you cannot live without something you were not born with. If I wasn't born with it, I can live without it. But it makes you believe that way. And it's the same way with us as believers. There are certain actions, there are certain emotions, there are certain reactions to things that we feel like that we're not us without that reaction. God said, I came to save you from that reaction. It's that very reaction and that action that I'm trying to deliver you from. It's that very presence of your father's, your mother's DNA that I'm trying to extrapolate from your life. The enemy has taken control of your wound or your pain. And you've been controlled by the pain. And it is affecting how you're able to receive the mercy or favor of God. It's affecting your ability. It's here. It's now. It's happening. People hearing this message in the day and their life is being changed. They're hearing it in a minute and their life is being changed. There was a woman in St. John, in St. John, St. Luke, St. Luke, the fifth, St. Luke, fifth chapter, the uh, chapter of the incurables. She was there. She had an issue of blood. She had it for uh, 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 12 long years, but she heard a message of mercy and favor and told her that told her about Jesus and what Jesus could do and what Jesus would do and what he was willing to do. And she left where she is and she ran from behind. Wait a minute, what do you mean ran from behind? This wasn't even her story. God's about to give you a miracle that ain't even on your story yet. This ain't even your chapter and verse. This is somebody, this is about a man named, uh, a man of a uh, high authority named Jairus whose daughter's getting ready to get healed. But she comes from behind because of what she heard. And touches the hem of his garment. You know what? Psalms 141 and verse number three. Listen, 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 listen. You got to set. You got to tell God, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. That's going to be hard for you because one of your habits is to talk too much. And not only to talk too much, to talk yourself into lies. You're going to learn to lie to yourself and think it's the truth. That's a psychological thing, man. You lie to yourself. Oh, this is fine. No problem. You got to ask God, set a watch over my mouth. Glory to God. Set a watch, Lord, over my mouth. Before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. Keep the door. You know, you know, they have, they, you have ushers to keep doors, right? Ushers keep doors to keep people from coming in when they should not and keep them from going out when they should not. There's some words that need not go out sometimes and there's some thoughts that ought not come in. Keep a watch. Oh, over the door of my mouth. And over my lips. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Hebrews 12 and 15. It's important that we look in this because we need to look. We need to look diligently. We need to find and see if there's a possibility. Is there a slight possibility that I'm bitter? Is there a slight po possibility that pain has entered my life and come into my life in the way and turned to bitterness and turned to bitterness? And then I want to define for you bitter because when you think bitterness, you think about the taste and how if something is not good, your mouth frowns up. And that, of course, would be bitterness. But then there's also a bitterness that links deep down in your soul that is something to do with somebody else how to act what to do and what they don't do and if that affects you then you are not well you are not very well at all you might be bitter you might be bitter if you if you if you if if, if you invest your time explaining your pains more than planning your future you might be bitter if you spend a whole lot of time talking about what happened to you how it happened you know back in 1822 as if the person you talk to got a deal about it. They don't have a clue. You know what? I was watching the news last night, and I was alive and well in 1979. Well, I was alive not too well, but I was alive. And they said that in 1979 that Carter was running, and Carter passed out. I said, I don't remember that. That was news. And I thought I was, keep, well, I wasn't keeping up with no news. I know I wasn't there. I know what I was keeping up with. That pony was riding, and I was trying to catch it. <laughs> But, 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 but he, he passed out in 1979. I don't remember that. I don't recall that. I don't re even recall George Bush eating a, eating a pretzel and falling out in the White House. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I remember because I said he wasn't eating a pretzel. He was, you know. <laughs> Let me get off that stuff. Anyway. I mean, so, so there are things, there are things that you, 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 if you are always, always talking about what happened to you, always, always talking about who hurt you? Always remembering something bad that went on. I remember here. I remember there. When I was over here. When I was up there. When I was around here. And when I was little. When I got big. When I was short. When I got tall. When I gained all that weight. And I got that bypass surgery. And I lost all that weight. If you're always talking about your pain. It may be a clue. 
that you got some bitterness inside of you. If you got jealousy inside of you because somebody else grows or somebody else get promoted or so somebody else achieves something, it might be that you have bitterness inside of you. Just maybe. Just maybe. If you meet people, people that you've known over years and, and they come into your company and all of a sudden you go from ha 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 to you might be bitter. You might be bitter. You just might be bitter. There may be something stuck inside of you that you may need to deal with. Come on, say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Come on, say it out loud. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Lord, help me, help me, help me. Look at Hebrews 12 and 15. Hebrews 12 and 15 says this. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Look at somebody and say, the one thing I don't want to do is miss God's favor. Give me the Amplified Version, please. Let me get the Amplified Version just for a minute. This is important. Amplified Version makes this statement. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another, to see that no one falls back and fails to secure God's grace, his amount of favor, and spiritual blessings in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and the many become contaminated and defiled by it. Stop. See, when you're bitter, when you're bitter, and you've not dealt with some things that occurred in your past or dealt with some things that happened in your life, you're not satisfied being angry, upset, misplaced, emotional, alone. You got to get somebody in there with you. Kind of like me in that pork shop. I wasn't satisfied eating it alone. I had to get somebody at the table with me. Not realizing that there's some things that I can take that he cannot take. So you may contaminate and defile them. You might survive, but they may die. You might get over it, and you know, isn't it amazing, isn't it amazing, especially when you're dealing with children, isn't it amazing to parents that when we fall out with certain people or fall out with certain things and we spread that fallout to our children, we get over it, and before you know it, we're inviting those people around, we're laughing again, but the children are still defiled and contaminated by that emotion you put in there. Found it all, found it all. Get the New Living Translation for a minute, please. Watch the New Living Translation. It said, look after each other so that none of you will miss out on the special favor of God. Yeah. The spe Come on, look at your neighbor and say, listen, 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 listen. And I know it's difficult, especially when you're dealing at home, but you have to deal at home, too. You have, look, that ain't right. Don't do it that way. Now, I know this is going to cost me, but I'm telling you, that is not right. We're in a time of special favor, and we all need to get it. Yeah. We all need to get it. Don't miss out on special favor of God. Watch out that no bitter root of unbelief rises up among what? Arises up among what? So when it when starts at home, starts at home, then it, then, then it starts. It starts in your community. Then it moves from your community into your city. Leave your city, go to your state, your county, your state, and then to the world. You got to work on it, work on it, work on it. Don't walk around broke down, beat down like that. Don't allow yesterday to dominate your present. Yes, 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 yes. Can't do it. Can't do it. Come on, say, I can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. That special favor of God that no one, that no one, listen, here, that latter part said that no one, this is another translation I picked up uh, uh, in one of my Bibles I got back there. It said that no one cultures a root of bitterness to cause a disturbance. Let no one get a root of bitterness that will cause, cause for a disconnect in the fellowship, a disconnect with one another. But this is our time of special favor, man. That's some stuff that's got to surface about you. That's some stuff that's got to surface about me. That's some attitudes that got to come up about me. That's some attitudes that got to come up about you. And we got to make sure that we allow for this special time of mercy and favor so that what God wants us to be, we can get there and stop living with this thing. Come on, say, get over it and get on with it. Let me, let me go to the verse of scripture. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Nehemiah was not only dealing with his enemy, he was dealing with the church folk too. They, they were becoming a problem to the growth process, to the next level of venture. And I want you to know that there are some people dearest and nearest to you that can become a problem. So here's what Nehemiah said. Here's what Nehemiah said. Somebody shout glory to God. It is verse number verse number one. He said four and one. Excuse me, four and one. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, we built the wall. He was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews and mocked.